Hello YouTube, here's my boy. Press the invitation bell and the subscribe button in below. <laughs> and thank you. And thank you. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. I have noticed over the past several months that the X-Packs are seem to be leaving the Philippines. At least I've noticed that more of them are going to other countries. And um, the reason I know this is I've seen them posted in their videos. And the puzzle is why? Well, you know, some of the cases it's economics. Some of the cases it's infrastructure, conveniences. You know, the Philippines is, as you know, is just a group of islands. Some large and some small. I just happen to live on one of the large ones. Unless you're in uh, Manila, Cebu, or Dabo, or similar places, you know, even in those places, you know, the population is so heavy that traffic is just miserable. But, let's talk about the economic end of it. I just got an electric bill again. With another increase. As you all know that uh, I did add, upgrade my solar. My extra panels and batteries and so forth. But I only had a, roughly about two weeks on this electric bill that I just received. And I still ended up paying more than the previous month. Well, that's beside the point. It's not the, the actual cost. It's the, the reason I've got the solar. It's for the constant brownouts that we have here in this local area. Matter of fact, electricity was off last night, and as far as I know, it's still off. And as you can see, I'm not suffering. And I think it's little things like that that uh, some are just, uh, they're just tired. And they want to change. But also, you know, we went this, this month, we've done our monthly thing. Uh, the bank was offline. Hard to get your money because you only have to wait two or three days before they get back up and running again. I think it's things like that that has a, a bearing on what, why some of them are leaving. Uh, but what do I know? <laughs> it's just a personal opinion. Road conditions? No. Yeah, well, they've improved the roads uh, here on this island, and I'm sure they have on others too. Haven't been to another island in a while. Uh, but still, if you've ever driven on, even on a newly, freshly built road here in the Philippines, my God, it's rough. That's another reason I'm not interested in a new vehicle. Uh, you just beat it to death. My little van, I just replaced the tires on it, as you all well aware of it. Uh, roughly 16 months, I think it is, something like that. Put uh, 32,000 kilometers, that's just a little over 20,000 miles. Uh, that's not a lot of tire life, is it? 
because I recall before I came to the Philippines, uh, it wasn't unusual to get 50,000 miles on a set of tires. So for 80,000 kilometers. Of course, the type of tire too, you know, I bought, I bought came on the van when I purchased it. They're uh, just a cheap Chinese brand of tires. And that's what I put back on it. Because I know that uh, the, well, the roads are so bad, dude. I'm going to have a flat. If I damage an expensive tire, that little things like that, I'm sure, has a play with my uh, foreigners are leaving, expats, and so forth. Cost of food here. It's getting unreal, you know. Of course, I'm putting a lot of time frame in between this. When I first come here, Grace and I, we were spending around $200 a month on groceries. Well, at that time, four, six, eight, that. That normally fed 10 people. And I ate well. Now roll up to the day. It's not unusual. Or beginning of the month for basic things that we normally get. And this includes cleaning supplies and so did before. No, our initial purchase will average two hundred and fifty dollars, and we'll spend additionally on filling items, uh, vegetables, uh, different meats, and so forth uh, throughout the rest of the month. We'll spend three times that much more. You know, our, our food bill is up around six hundred dollars, and we're feeding less people. You know, we're roughly we're just Grace and I and the son and the mom and sister and dad. And you know, they uh, they purchase a lot on their own. So it's it's unreal that the difference in cost. Now, I don't drink beer anymore because I, I just got so far overweight I just quit drinking it. But I used to have a case of beer, 24 bottles, delivered for 195 pesos. And at that time, that's roughly, I was getting roughly $5 for a case of beer. I don't know what it is now, but the last I heard, uh, it's uh, over 800 pesos. I haven't bought a case in years. That is one example of different cost. No, chicken. No, it wasn't unusual to see chicken priced at 49 pesos a kilo. Now it's you're lucky if you see it priced at one ninety nine, but most time it's like two oh nine per kilo. Big difference. Uh, we buy grocery chicken because of uh, the local chicken here. For some reason, <laughs> it's kind of tough, it's like rubber. The native chickens, they call it. It tastes okay. But it just not a lot of meat on it, and it's it's tough. And by the way, I, I prepared some chicken breast yesterday. Made a uh, kind of like a soup, and it was good. Uh, I slow cooked it with some vegetables, and I like a 
thing. I get I don't know what you call it. The Asian radish. And I, I put a little Asian radish in there. And, uh, and to, to give it a soft taste, I always use a few tomatoes because, you know, tomatoes are citrus. Because <coughs> I don't uh, add salt to my food anymore. Kind of blood pressure. There's another thing, too. Uh, Health care here in the Philippines, if you get away from the major cities, it's it's not, it's okay for minor things, but if you have something serious, well, you're basically out of luck. Mm. Or I'm talking about heart attack and stroke and so forth. Cancer. Like uh, a friend of mine, as you all well aware of, I've told you a couple other videos. He's in the States right now, getting prepared for his treatments. I talked to him yesterday. And uh, he's still in pretty good spirits. Uh, hopefully things go well for him. Now, that, that's the reason he, he left, because, you know, he just, with his income, he just can't afford health care here in the Philippines. Because, you know, you're well aware of that Medicare and Medicaid is not accepted here. Yeah, it's only in the uh, usable in the states and its territories. And uh, I have looked at some insurance policies. And they're just not affordable, not for someone with my income. And you know, a lot of people come here in the beginning so they can live some kind of life on, on a limited income. Fortunately, I've got my feet on the ground and I'm anchored, got a house, transportation, and so forth. And I got my expenses. Uh, within the reasonable bounds uh, that fits within our budget. Now, if you're freshly coming here, that's hard to do. You know, when you're paying rent, utilities and so forth, rent has went up considerably. Now, there's still some affordable places, uh, especially when you get out into the provinces. You can find uh, a place to live affordable. But what I used to pay, like when I lived in La Palapa, uh, our rent was 6,000 pesos, roughly $120, $125, depending on the exchange rate. I doubt that being available now. So, and we live in a, a decent uh, subdivision, except for the dogs. <laughs> That was really my biggest complaint. Yeah. But uh, those days have gone by. I guess uh, that happens about anywhere in the world. But it's a, it was an option for expats like me to actually have some kind of life. Well, there's no way that uh, Grace and I and my son could live in the States. We just don't have the income. No. Just in uh, my hometown area. Uh, rent would uh, basically eat our income. If possible, could get some transportation, it definitely wouldn't leave nothing left over. So that option's out of out of the picture, and that's sad. So, I think back, you know, I worked hard. 
made decent money. And there were events uh, that happened that kept me from having that nice savings. It wasn't because of planning or effort. It's just the way it was. There were just events that happened. And that happens to a lot of folks. Mainly was uh, health issues. Uh, work accidents. So, the reality is, you know, things are changing, and they're making it more difficult, no matter where you live in the world. If you don't have uh, a successful job that, that allows you to have a reasonable income when it comes time to retire, there's fewer places. But fortunately, like I said again, I've done some planning when I got here and to uh, kind of foresee in the future that things would get more expensive. And uh, I'm set up comfortably, small house, which is nice. Good neighborhood. I love it here. I've never been more comfortable in my life. So, with that said, if you do plan on coming here, put a plan together, stick to it, be very conservative. That's if you're going to live here for an extended period of time like I have. That way you can get rooted and be comfortable, hopefully. My friend that uh, just left, like I said, Marky, he was on that mission. You know, he, he's building a house. Uh, I've been down to visit his place. It's a one bedroom. <coughs> and it's not complete. But it was complete enough for where he could live in it. And he could do a little bit each month as his income would allow. Now, if he could have hung in there a couple more years, he could have probably been similar to me. Uh, rooted in and have his income open to where he can use it for other things. But, like all things in life, the things you can't help. But that's my opinion why a lot are leaving. It's economics mostly. And second would be conveniences. And then infrastructure. You know, you know, travel here, it's not like in a developed country. You, know, you can't go to point A, point B, you know, in a hurry. For example, you know, like, that's going to Domagetti. A little over about a hundred miles, and it's basically a four-hour journey. Sometimes I can do it less time. With Colo, it's a little closer, but still, it's uh, from my house to Bacolo. It's three and a half hours. It's not that far. So I think that's got a lot to do with the two, plus transportation here in the Philippines. You don't have your own transportation. The public transportation is crowded, uncomfortable in most cases. Yeah. But that's what you got to deal with. They're going to be hired the, the vans. I, I will not ride those if, if I can get out of it any way possible. 
<clears throat> talking about a van packed with 20 plus people, shoulder to shoulder, and they, and they drive like maniacs. And I'm not being unrealistic. So, with that said, but that's my opinion why a lot are, are leaving now. The tourists, they come and go. It's like with any country. But those that plan on staying, uh, the new wears off, and they're just not comfortable. And they'll hop to another country. I tip my hat off to them because they're searching for that desire to live comfortable. But that's my opinion, folks. I appreciate you watching. If you don't mind, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Everybody take care now.